All right, everyone, um, I'm going to do another quick tutorial here. This one's just to do an angle cut on a 2x4. Um, hopefully, you have created a 2x4 in the same way that I have shown in my other video, where when you click on this, it is all one group. If it is not all blue on the edge like this, if it's not all one group, then you've done something wrong and you need to go back and watch my video again because, or another video, whatever. But you need to go back and learn how to do that. This needs to be one piece. There's all kinds of reasons for that. And as you're building, you'll later run into all kinds of issues if you don't do that. So, um, so it needs to be all blue when you select it. Once it's all, when it's all blue like that, that gives you a couple of options. Um, makes it so you can move it as one piece. So if you just have this guy right here, you just take it and move it around. Um, and also makes it so you can spin it. You see the little guy right there that makes it so you can rotate it like so. Um, and then there's just there's just multiple reasons why you need to have it one group. So so make sure that that it is the one group. All right. Uh, let's see where to start. Actually, where was I? All right. So um, first things first. I'm gonna I'm uh, like I said I'm gonna be doing um, a couple of angle cuts today. Um, the first angle cut is very, very similar to the way you would cut a piece of wood in real life. And so that will feel like a very organic process. Um, the second way is a much more virtual or digital way of cutting it. And both of them, I think, are, are um, I think, in my opinion, both of them are, are easy to use. And, um, and you could get to the point where, uh, where either is going to be just as easy as the other. And so... Um, and but but you certainly will use both ways if you're doing a larger project because there are multiple time, multiple different uses for each way of cutting and you would kind of discover that on your note on your own um, in in doing the project. All right. So first first things first, you need to put this this uh, piece this this two by four. You need to put it in edit mode. To do that, just double click on it. Double clicking on it means that you now can, you can actually work on any one of the sides as an individual piece. You can select different areas and it basically does what this program is called, called uh, exploding it. It's exploding the group, makes it so that each one of these pieces of the group, the lines, the edges, the sides, everything is its own piece and now is adjustable or manipulated or able to be manipulated. So, uh, so we've got it like that. Now, the other way you can do this is just by right clicking and go to edit group. There's two different ways to do it. All right. So next thing um, is the very, very first step to, uh, to cutting this is to get the angle you want. To get an angle, we're always going to use a protractor. And with a protractor, you've got edges. Green represents the top. Red repre represents this side angle. And blue represents this side angle. So you're gonna have you're gonna have those three angles anytime you use a protractor, and you just kind of have to get used to how it works, how it feels. We want the green one because we're gonna be using this top area to create our angle. So I clicked on the corner while it was in green mode, and uh, and then I drag it along this one edge and I hit click or just click it. And so then you're gonna take that and you're gonna stretch it out towards the angle you want. Obviously, it could go this way or the other way, but we want an angle this way. So out here, you want to get an exact angle. Let's say that we're going to do 20 degrees today. So we, we go to 20, we type 20 uh, down here in the bottom. You don't have to click in there to do it. Because you're already, you've got this angle, it's already ready for you to put in an angle in that area. So if you type, so if you type in 20, it'll see, it'll just be there. And then you just hit enter. Now it's got that angle. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mark our piece of wood with a pencil. So you go up to the pencil up here, and that's just a line drawer. So we're going to click in the corner, follow that line, and make a spot, make a, um, a mark on the other end. You can see the little X here, and it's telling you where the intersection is, so you can just click on it, and it'll create the exact mark of where you wanted it in that edge. Now, if you wanted, you could create another line right here. It's not necessary, but for... Um, for later uh, purposes, you may want to be able to create a line all the way around it. Like, see, I can go this way and I can create one exactly right there too. So that is very helpful with other uses of the exact same, same sets. Uh, all right, so we've got our line. Next thing we wanna do is we're gonna get rid of this piece. 
And the way we do that is we go to our push-pull tool. So we've got our push-pull tool. And if you notice, it will highlight any area that you go over, including the small one. And that's what we're going to do is we're going to grab that small one. I clicked it once, and then I just start getting just making it disappear by shrinking it. And then you hit it again, click again, and it's gone. And that's it. That piece is gone. And so now, one thing to note um, about being in the editing area of a group is any lines that you create like this, measurement lines, anything you create in here is a part of the group. So if you don't delete those before you get out of the group like this, they stay there. And if I click on it, I'm clicking on the whole group because it is part of that group. So you need to be in edit mode and click on that and hit delete. Otherwise, it's going to stay there. There you go. That's cutting an angle. It's very simple. It's an easy process. That's the first one, in my opinion. Um, that, that's the one, and that's the most common and the easiest to do, in my opinion. The other one, I can see why people like it. So I'm going to show you that other way now. Let's just go ahead and back it up, and we'll do the exact. We'll, we'll work with the same piece, do the exact same cut in a different way. All right. So first things first, we're going to explode it again or edit it. So we're going to edit mode, and uh, and this time we are going to uh, we're going to do the same thing using the protractor. We're going to create the dimension of what we want. We'll go to twenty. Whoops. Go to twenty. Sorry, I had to click that first part first. There. So now we have a twenty degree angle again. Now instead of marking it this time, I'm instead of using the pencil. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tape measure. And we'll grab this corner, and then we'll go to the intersection right here, and we'll click on it. Now we have a mark, a, a digital mark here and here according to the history of, of the program, not according to the actual piece of wood. The reason why we need that is we need a measurement spot of where to stop when we control this side. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to select this edge right here. Notice, remember I was showing you before, you can, you can select any edge you want when it's, when it's in edit mode like this. So we're going to grab this, angle, this, this uh, corner right here, and we're going to get, get the Move tool. The Move tool you can select by either hitting M or going up here and just selecting the tool. Then on the side here, you're going to see a little blue right about midpoint, right? Well, midpoint's good if you're if if you're trying to find a midpoint spot, but we want to line up this corner with with the other corner over here. We want we want it to line up with that intersection. So you want to start on this corner. So click it and start pulling it towards it, and get to that intersection and click again. And there you go, and you've got it. So very simple. It's an easy way to do it. There there are the two different ways of doing it. Um, and uh, both of them accomplish the same thing, but uh, there you go. Okay. All right. That should be it. All right. Uh, I'm thinking there's, I feel like there was something else I was going to talk about, but that does it.